So there seems to be a little bit of a trend here on YouTube for people to do magic in their videos. <coughs> Peter McKinnon. And uh, I happen to be a little bit of a magician myself. So uh, as you can see, there's nothing in my hands. And if I just snap my fingers. What? How did this work? I know you must be confused by now. You're probably questioning everything you thought you knew. Things like, do I even exist? What's the purpose of life? Is the earth really round? And unfortunately, a magician never tells. So I guess you're just gonna have to let this one go. Anyway, let's move on with the video. These are five projects that I think every programmer should try at least once. First project is building a web scraper. Web scraping is something that I think that every programmer should try at least once because it can be super useful, especially when it comes to automation of tasks. Let's take something like paying the electric bill, for instance. You could easily create a Python script where all you enter is the amount to be paid. And then the script takes care of going to your bank site, logging in and making the payment. I guess you want to be careful with something like this. I can see how this could easily go wrong. But that is just one example that comes to mind that illustrates the use of web scraping. And there's tons of other instances where you might be doing a repetitive and really tedious, boring task that could easily be automated with some web scraping. So therefore I think that web scraping or building a web scraper is a really good project to try out. And there's a lot of interesting applications for it. Second project that I think you should try is building a simple API. Sorry for the rhyme. Creating an API is also something that I think is extremely useful, not only because it's a great skill to have to be able to build an API, but also because by doing this, you get a vastly better understanding of how the web works. You'll understand the basics of that go into building something like Facebook, Instagram, or Google. And if you also add in an SQL database with this, you get a project that's well set up to give you a really solid understanding of the basics of backend development. This is one of those projects that I personally think is the most fun to work on because once you understand how to build a simple API and an SQL database to go along with that, you basically understand how to build something like Facebook. Even though there's a lot more that goes into building Facebook, this is the fundamental stuff that you need to know in order to be able to do something like that, which is really cool once you understand it. And now you might be thinking, well, what would I host this on? Luckily for you, our video sponsor Atlantic.net takes care of that for you. Atlantic.net provides great VPS hosting and they're offering a free one gig virtual server with SSDs and block storage for free for a year, plus $50 in free credits to use for other services that they offer. Try Atlantic.net to develop, test or launch your next projects. Unlike many other big names, they have great always available technical support and their support people actually work there which is something that's really important for me, especially when I get stuck late at night coding on some problem and I wanna get help straight away. They actually provide this, which is great. So go to atlantic.net slash cal and use the coupon code cal with capital letters to get a $50 credit. Okay, third project is to create a simple snake game. So this one's a classic. There are tons of tutorials available on how to do this and how to improve it and add crazy features to it. I recommend building your first one in JavaScript because it's just the simplest way to get one up and running. And after doing that, I would also recommend giving it a go in another language and building it with a graphical user interface or GUI. For instance, I feel like Java would be great for something like this. For me personally, creating a GUI in Java has always made a lot more sense than something like TKinter and Python. It would require a lot less code to write it in TK Inter and Python, but for whatever reason, when I've used TK Inter and Python, it's never really run that smoothly, and I've gotten a lot of issues that I've never really experienced with Java. So that might just be me. But anyway, I think that this is a great project to learn the basics of creating a game and all the things that go along with that, like animations and game logic. 
I also recommend following a tutorial to understand how to create the base game and then going off on your own and trying to add new features. Things like implementing logic so that when the snake bites its own tail, it bites off one part of the tail instead of the game being over. You can Google this because there are lots of great challenges that you can add in that are fun to try. Moving on to the fourth project, creating a basic web server. If this doesn't excite you, then I guess you're pretty normal, but I'm not, so it excites me. And there are lots of reasons for why you'd wanna be able to build a web server and lots of uses you could have for one. But one of the main things for me is that if you're able to create an API with a database, and then you add that you're also able to create a web server to go along with that, then you basically become the full package because that's all that goes into creating something like Google. They basically have web servers running with an API that allows you to access their databases that's hosted on their web servers. Now, this is one that may cost you a little bit of money to try out because you will need a dedicated machine to build this. But I suspect that a lot of people might have an old PC somewhere sitting around gathering dust, which honestly can be perfect for something like this. Keep in mind that you don't have to build the most powerful web server in the world, since you will most likely be the only user. I don't believe that you need a whole lot to build something decent. You can then use this web server to store your files and essentially creating your own cloud storage. And I know that a lot of people are feeling a little bit iffy about Google and Apple and whatever else having access to all your files. So if you create your own web server, then you can be the only one who has access. So I definitely think that this is an interesting project to try out. And I might actually make a video on this in the future at some point. The last project that I think every programmer should try is creating a Chip8 emulator. All right, so this one is just fun to try out. And I also think that it's quite different from the other projects that I've described in the sense that I think it's a little bit more difficult to actually create. So what is an emulator? And what is the difference between an emulator and a simulator? The simplest description here is to take the classic Pong game as an example. Let's say that the original Pong game was written in the language C and designed to run on system A, which only runs programs written in C. I can still write a Pong game in Java and run it on a different system that only runs Java code, but that means that I'm simulating that game. What I could also do is I could emulate the actual system A that Pong runs on, which allows me to run the original Pong game written in C on a system that only runs Java code. This means that we won't just be able to run Pong, but we'll be able to run any other game that was developed for system A. So this is a really interesting thing to try out and it opens up a whole new world of possibilities in terms of writing emulators for more modern machines like Xbox, PlayStation, or whatever else you might want to dig your teeth into. I'll leave links in the description to resources that I think might be helpful for this and also for the other projects that I've described. But that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. And before you go, I just want to mention that I've created a separate channel called Live Coder, where I do some live stream coding every now and then. So if you want to, you can go subscribe to that channel for some pure long form coding sessions. All right, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one. You guys should be coding from the start. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Philip, and I'm sure that his platform can do a lot of great things, but just web startups and phone startups are so competitive right now that you, you're, you have to assume that anything you're doing, there's a team of two to four dedicated hardcore hackers who's working 24-7 at something extremely similar. So if you have this iteration loop where you have to submit something out to someone else and they have to come back you're like no no, no that wasn't quite right because all this stuff lost in translation you're going to get like one or two cycles per day at best meanwhile that other team is getting 20 cycles a day mm. i mean to the it, it's gotten so intense now that non-coding founders and startups are having a really difficult time adding value at these early stages uh, but it, it just seems really risky to me